Hello, and welcome to this introductory tutorial on Action Graph, the powerful and exciting visual scripting editor for Omniverse. With Action Graph, Omniverse users and developers alike can create a variety of event-based interactions that make scripting in Omniverse more approachable than ever. By wiring together nodes, users can now create complex, event-based actions in no time. Ready to dive in and see what the Action Graph can do for your project? Great, because in this quick walkthrough, you will learn all the basics you need to get started. Okay, let's begin by launching Omniverse Create. Note, however, the OmniGraph extension is used in many kit-based apps like Machinima, audio to face Isaac Sim, and others. In all cases, OmniGraph and ActionGraph will work similarly, and this video applies equally to them all. Awesome, okay, let's dive into the interface and do a quick review. When working in Action Graph, there will be a few key locations that you will visit consistently. Most importantly, we will start with the Action Graph panel. To launch the panel, simply navigate to Window, then Visual Scripting, then finally Action Graph. This should open the window, and you can dock it somewhere that you like. Now, in this panel, we have the ability to create or edit Action Graphs, but we can also create them from the Create menu, or within the right-click menu. Whichever way you like, the results are the same. A new action graph will be created and can be selected in the stage. Now, we can begin editing and developing actions for prims in our world. Excellent. Okay, now, in the upper left of our action graph panel, notice that we have a few options. The plus symbol offers yet another way to create a new action graph, while the pencil symbol allows us to choose an action graph to edit, should we have several action graphs in our scene. Moving slightly over, these dots here allow global expansion of graph nodes to help with the clutter as graphs get large. You can also collapse nodes individually by clicking the hyphen on any node. Cool, the edit button here directs you to the preferences panel in the visual scripting tab. Finally, we have the View tab. Here we can auto-format our nodes with layout nodes. Zoom to the extents of our populated graphs with Frame All. And finally, we can adjust how we want our nodes to be labeled with node header options. Good so far? Excellent. Now, as we will be working with the Action Graph predominantly in this tutorial, let's maximize our screen's real estate for visual scripting. In the Layout menu, we have a Layout option perfectly suited for this. By selecting Layout, then Visual Scripting, your interface should rearrange itself to look similar to this. Now, our viewpoint is conveniently sized, yet prominently placed over our properties, Stage, and Layers, while our Action Graph is now front and center. Excellent. Should you wish to return to the defaults, simply select Layout, then Default. I'm going to switch it back. Great. Now that I can see things better, let's keep moving. As you may have noticed a moment ago, we can drag and drop nodes from this categorized list here on the left. This list contains all the actions and events possible in OmniGraph. To begin visual scripting, simply drag and drop from the list. Then, connect the nodes together with noodles by click-dragging from one node's output to another node's input. Nice. We can remove the noodles by right-clicking on them and selecting Disconnect. To remove the nodes themselves, we can just select them and press the Delete key on the keyboard. Moving around the Action Graph interface is pretty straightforward as well. Simply hold your middle mouse button and drag to pan. Use the scroll wheel to zoom. Nothing much to it. As Action Graph revolves around affecting prims in our scenes, accessing them from our graph is essential. To demonstrate this, let's go ahead and create a cube. We will see it appear here in our stage. Now we can drag it from our stage to the Action Graph. When we do, we will be asked if we want to read or to write its properties. Select Write to set the properties of a prim, and Read to get the properties of a prim. Now, if I want my cube to spin, I need both. One to read its current rotation, and one to set its new rotation. Now, 
Because we want our cube to spin, we can depict the rotate XYZ property in both the read and in the write nodes. Notice though, we have many properties we can get and set to accommodate a variety of needs. You can even create custom properties as needed for more advanced workflows. Now let's look for a node in our categorize node list. Let's find the on tick event node under events and drag it to the action graph. Event nodes are the heart of event graphs, as the name suggests. They are responsible for starting chains of actions and can even trigger other events. This node is one of the most commonly used as it gives us a loop of events triggered by the computer tick. As you become proficient, having quick access to known nodes becomes imperative. To accomplish this, you have two convenient choices that I use about equally. The first option is that you can just use the search. It is here at the top of the node list panel. Let's now go ahead and type to float. Expectedly, we are presented with a list of all things to float related. Good. Now we can just drag our to float node to the viewport and connect the delta seconds from the on tick event node to my to float node. As you can see, filtering was a bit more efficient than fumbling through a huge list of categorized nodes. If you prefer an even quicker method, your second option lies in the quick search menu. By pressing tab on the keyboard, you can quickly see a full list of nodes, just like the node list. Notice though, that the search is already selected and awaiting input. You can simply type break, for example, and the results are displayed. Lovely. Now we can drag and drop to the action graph and work just like we did before. By connecting this break three, our cube's rotation is now separated into three separate axes, allowing us control over each of them individually. Now with an add node and a constant float node, we can use the make three vector to increase the value by one and write it back to our cube's rotation. All we have to do now is connect our on tick event and hit play to see our visual script take action. Look at that, our cube is rotating. Great! For noodling around and debugging, we can alternatively unselect only simulate on play within any event node to see things happen without the need to hit the play button. This can be very convenient as we are no longer required to hit play, stop, play, stop, etc. in order to see how our script is acting. The last critical item on our interface left uncovered are variables. They are found here on the variables tab. By selecting the plus variable button, we will create a new variable. By default, it will be called new variable and it will be a Boolean. If we select the variable, we can alter its name. I'll call mine current rotation. We can also change its type. For my needs here, I'll select float to denote a floating point number type variable. Excellent. Once created, putting them to use is simple. Drag and drop it into your scene and you can choose to read or write them. For example, if I select to write to my current rotation node the output of this add node, I can easily store the variable for reuse elsewhere. One of the nice features somewhat unique to Action Graph is its ability to debug in real time. If you select nodes along your chain, you will see values being updated in real time. You can easily check on a node's value at any moment. This alleviates the cumbersome need for having to write to the console to see what a node is up to. Another key feature of Action Graph is in its modularity. Once done with an Action Graph scene, you can save your USD stage and reuse it in any of your other OmniGraph scenes. Here you can see I am opening an existing scene. I'm gonna go ahead and drag our cube we just saved into it. Notice that it immediately begins rotating and acting in the scene. 
In this exact way, you can create complex interactive worlds from the ground up rather than the top down. This is a key for long-term, high-quality asset libraries, as the assets themselves can store all of their own required capability independent of the world in which they are spawned. For example, both the light and the fan were developed independently of the scene. If we open and investigate the lamp, we can see some logic to control enabling and disabling the lamp. If we open the fan, we see a complex, ramped multi-speed rotator and a light triggered on the same key as our lamp. Back in our scene, we have the culmination of all of our prefabs and can use all actions as described in subordinate graphs. Powerful stuff. Okay, so I believe this should have given you the grounding to get started in Omniverse Action Graph. It won't be long before you go from spinning a simple cube to developing actions in a 3D world. With a minimum of effort and a little practice, Action Graph makes scripting in Omniverse more approachable than ever. I hope this tutorial gets you started, and be sure to delve into the more advanced tutorials as you progress. Okay, thank you for watching, and bye-bye for now.